It's October 2015, and I'm hiding behind a table in a theatre in Gloucester. I'm wearing tap shoes and a Joan Collins mask, and my stomach is churning. I'm about to go onto stage and welcome about 60 people to the very first outing of my very first show about being a survivor of childhood sexual abuse. Then I will do a really bad tap dance and spend the next hour pretending to be different, amazing Joans. Joan of Arc and Joan Rivers and Joan Jett, women who were wildly unconventional in their time, who had enough self-belief to follow their own inner voice, who took risks and kicked ass. All qualities that feel alien to me as a survivor. The show is called I Am Joan, and it's about me trying those things on for size. So I'm squatting behind a table, and the level of anxiety I feel is unlike anything I've ever felt before when I've performed. And the difference is, is that this time, I'm speaking out about abuse. I realise that on top of normal pre-show nerves, I'm hitting up against a lifetime of conditioning that says it is not safe or acceptable to talk about what happened to me. So this is what I have to overcome as I hide behind the table. I remember imagining all the Jones all around me, willing me on. And then, in defiance, I pop up into the spotlight, flounce around to the Dynasty theme tune, and then I spill the beans. For the next hour, I am Joan. I do the thing I'm not supposed to do because I believe in it, because I'm done with keeping other people's dirty secrets, and I refuse to carry shame for other people's disgusting behaviour. And because somehow I've reached a point in my life where I can, and because I can't think of anything more important to do. Because the impact of the silence is almost as devastating as the abuse itself. It heaps isolation and shame on top of the trauma for survivors who have already suffered enough. I'll talk about me. I experienced severe sexual abuse between the ages of naught and 10, both at home and at school in 1970s London, with lifelong impacts. As a child, I had a developmental delay, insomnia and obsessive behaviours, later developing migraines, disordered eating, chronic cystitis and a profound mistrust of authority. By adolescence, I was long-term depressed, anxious, suicidal, very angry and self-medicating with drugs and alcohol. I grew up in a vacuum of silence, no one ever talked about abuse. Stranger danger, yes, but the people who abused me were not strangers. The 2011 NSPCC report into child abuse and neglect in the UK reveals that like me, 90% of survivors were abused by someone they knew, often someone they trusted. For the first time I ever had, oh, the first time I ever had a conversation with a survivor about abuse was when I was 20. But I had dissociative amnesia, and so it took me a further nine years to remember what happened to me. Then, another 15 years and hundreds of therapy hours later, I'm crouched behind the table, ready to come out of hiding. After the show, I felt like I'd base jumped off a high building. It was terrifying and exhilarating. And then I just wanted to do it again and again and again. I Am Joan was like a gateway drug into survivor activism. Because this isn't really about me. This is about a huge hidden population of survivors. We are a group facing extreme marginalisation in every sector of society. Education, healthcare, employment, justice. We are more likely to develop serious health conditions and die young. 
we are massively overrepresented in statistics for mental health, homelessness, addiction, suicide, domestic violence and prisons. We face invisible, institutionalised oppression and discrimination by omission. If you had to estimate the size of the UK survivor population, what would you guess? How would you feel if I told you that I am one of 11 million adult survivors of child sexual abuse in the UK, as estimated in the 2011 NSPCC report? We are the largest marginalised group that most people have never heard of. 11 million is a shocking number, revealing the extent of a shocking crime. Abuse is not rare. It's an epidemic. It's an undercurrent running through the very fabric of our society, shaping our communities. I believe we urgently need to locate the survivor experience as a civil rights struggle. I could talk for a long time about the injustices, the barriers and the microaggressions that our community face. But I only have 15 minutes, so here are three things that are on my mind. First, the justice system does not work for survivors of childhood sexual abuse. It's my word against his. Despite 20 years of therapy, my memories are still very fragmented which is usual for someone who's experienced complex trauma. There is no evidence I could give that would stand up in court. So like many survivors, I have to accept the fact that no one will ever be prosecuted for the crimes they committed against me. Adding insult to injury, Boris Johnson said in March last year that investigating non-recent abuse cases was like spaffing money up the wall. Secondly, the mental health system does not work for survivors of child sexual abuse. It makes our normal responses to trauma wrong. And the onus is on us, not the perpetrators, to be better, to self-manage, to be more mindful without anything else changing, without exploring politically, systemically, what is wrong with our society that abuse is happening on this unbelievable scale with such devastating outcomes for survivors. Imagine, someone breaks into your house, they nick stuff and proper ransack it, maybe they do a shit in your fridge, and when you tell people, they don't believe you. And when you're angry, they tell you to calm down. And when you report it, nothing happens. And when you're frustrated with the injustice and with the lack of appropriate response, they label you as mad. Maybe they offer you medication. Maybe they lock you up. Finally, the media. Since 2012 and Operation Yew Tree, it's now commonplace to see an endless parade of celebrities, politicians, sports coaches and clergy on the news who have perpetrated abuse. And we're horrified for a minute. And then we go numb and push it to the back of our minds, unaware that this is the tip of an unbelievable iceberg. Five minutes later, we're laughing along complicit to a stream of casual jokes about paedophilia, incest and grooming on primetime TV, reinforcing for the survivors at home that their experiences are trivial and that nobody cares. We now generally agree that some jokes are morally reprehensible, Jokes that belittle marginalised communities. We wince at 1970s sitcoms. We don't expect to hear rape jokes on the Radio 4 tea time comedy slot. But these paedophile jokes, they are about rape. They're about the rape of children, of millions of children. And somehow we haven't joined up the dots. We are riddled with a cognitive dissonance. On the one hand, we think that abuse is horrific, but on the other, instead of justice, we offer ridicule. Instead of listening and support, we collude in silencing and oppression. We need to find the language, the understanding and the guts to take in the vast scale of this problem and to do something about it. We all need to become Jones. As we know from other civil rights movements, 
Change happens when marginalised communities come together and represent their interests. So I make theatre shows about my experience of abuse because I believe in the power of art to bring transformation to individuals and communities, to start conversations that are difficult, to mobilise empathy and to drive change. Most importantly, I want to help reduce isolation and shame in our community so that we can stand together, develop our collective voice and our capacity to resist. Because what else can I do? The only justice I can seek is change. My new theatre project is called Cutting Out. It's part show, part installation, part collective act of resistance. It's about bearing witness to the 11 million adult survivors of child sexual abuse in the UK. It's a public act of mourning for 11 million lost childhoods. And it's about uniting as a community of survivors and allies to say no. No more. You cannot ignore us anymore. I'm inviting people to join me to cut out chains of paper dolls. Each doll represents one heroic story of survival. Together, we will make 11 million of them. Join together, hand in hand. As the collection grows, our stories will take up bigger and bigger spaces. And we're going to start now. So you should have a pair of scissors and some paper. And on the paper is a template for you to cut around. Uh, in solidarity with survivors everywhere. When you've cut them out, it would mean a lot to me if you could hold them up above your head. I'd love to see them. And while you do that, I will finish, some words, finish with some words from my show, Oral. I'm going to run. I'm going to run down the stairs and out of the building. I'm going to run up the street and down the next street and I'm going to keep on running until I find the green. And I will not let anything get in my way. And I will run to the top of the highest hill and I will speak. And people will listen because what I have to say is important. And what I have to say is this. It is not just me. This is not just my story. There are thousands, millions of people just like me walking around in this deafening silence. Lots and lots and lots of people. Same story, different details. Same story, same excruciating denial. And now it's time for the world to listen because this can't go on forever. Something has got to change. And so I am going to run. And I am going to speak because I can. And I'm telling you, and you need to pay attention. You need to be part of the change. There is no cosy middle ground here. There is no neutral position. You're either running with us, changing things, or you're keeping everything the same. And you don't want to be that person because this is shit. This is shit that we cannot run away from, that we can only run towards weeping and hollering and fierce and raging. And together, we're going to get through this. You and me, all of you and all of me together. And that's just how it is. And that's just how it's going to be. Thank you very much. paper oh look at that just have a little look around at each other and look at your paper chains people thank you very much Viv is very happy for you to take your paper chain people home if they mean something to you or in the interval you could actually give your paper chain people to Viv and they will join the installation that she has talked about so thank you